and there is sound. Awesome. Welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about generating sound in the browser uh, with C Sharp, specifically in Blazor. Um, first of all, who am I? My name is uh, Christopher. Uh, I'm a developer on my day job when I'm not off as a day like today. Um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP in developer technologies uh, for .NET. If there was a category for Blazor, I would probably be for that. <laughs> uh, I have a website where I blog, uh, and I'm an active on uh, GitHub, um, X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, and Mastodon, or at least I try to be. <laughs> um, and what we'll see today, um, we will uh, first of all get an overview of what the Web Audio API is. Um, we will see what Blazor Web Audio can then uh, give. Uh, playing some simple tunes. Uh, we'll look a little at the related libraries, like uh, ones that work with media streams, and then a small demo that uses that as well. So first of all, uh, what is the Web Audio API? Uh, basically, it's an API that makes it possible to render uh, some audio, um, and for that, we have some different contexts, which is basically the context of where we want to render this audio. Either you have one that is the audio context, where you play some sound on the real speaker, or you have some offline uh, audio context where you can play sound uh, as fast as possible just to render it uh, if you want to do it on, like for some sound clip that you are going to play later or something like that. And then we have some different kinds of nodes. We have ones that can produce sound, we have ones that can process sound, and ones that can, uh, that can output it in different ways. Um, yeah, and basically these different nodes can then be connected together in order to make these complex graphs that generate uh, an output sound which is pretty cool. Uh, first of all, some of the producers, uh, and I'm going to go through them all. Um, one of the one most interesting ones are probably the oscillator node, uh, which is pretty uh, fundamental in audio engineering, uh, like being able to generate a sine wave in order to make a small, nice node. Uh, it's pretty uh, familiar to many people who work with sound engineering. And there are obviously ones that can uh, get in sound from some recorded sound, like the audio buffer source node, and once they get one uh, sound from a microphone, like the media stream uh, or your source node. Then there are a lot of different processor, uh, processors. I haven't listed them all. Um, again, I'm not going to go through them all, uh, but one of the most interesting ones is probably, or most used ones, is the gain node, being able to change the volume of whatever sound you generated. Um, and then there are more complex ones, uh, like the dynamic compressor node that can merge sounds and ensure that they're not going to peak uh, when outputted, uh, it's pretty complex. Uh, or the bi-quad uh, filter, uh, filter node, uh, which is um, probably something people who have worked with uh, audio engineering before uh, is familiar with, being able to uh, make low-pass filters or band filters and stuff like that for uh, filtering your sound in order to maybe remove noise. Um, it's also pretty... Um, yeah, something most people should be familiar with if they worked with audio engineering before. And then there are a few ways to output sound. Uh, you can output it to the speaker, that's the audio destination node, or you can output it to a media stream in order, for example, to record it or uh, pass it over the internet to some other device. And then we're going to talk about uh, Blazor Web Audio, which is my library uh, for working with uh, the Web Audio API in Blazor. Uh, and basically, uh, this wraps the JavaScript API uh, that is available in all browsers, all new browsers, <laughs> uh, in Blazor, so that you can write uh, C Sharp in order to generate some sound. And uh, now, uh, we're going to go through a little example that is like the most basic example that uses all the different, some of the different nodes, <laughs> the most basic ones. Um, like we have the producer, a processor, and an output. In our case, we're going to take an oscillator, generating some sine wave. We're going to put it through a gain node in order to not uh, destroy the speakers. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to output it through uh, the speakers in this room. So I've made a little uh, C-sharp method uh, called play sound. And first of all, I made uh, the context, which in our case is the audio context, because we want to use the actual speaker of my device. Uh, then we create some producer. Uh, in this case, it's the oscillator node. Uh, we define some settings, and we also connect it to the context because uh, the audio context we created in the start is where we want to render the sound. So we define that we want to use the sine wave, 
there are some different options. For example, there could be the sawtooth uh, type, which people might be familiar with if they played uh, retro games. Uh, that's the common uh, use there. Uh, and then we also define the frequency, which basically being uh, the pitch of the sound. And then uh, we create the processor, uh, in our case the gain node. Uh, again, we, we make some settings for it. We, want, you, we don't want to use 100%, so we say 0 0.2 to say, okay, we do, we're not going to destroy the speakers. <laughs> um, and in the end, we have a little helper method from the context in order to get uh, some destination, our speaker, um, that we can play the sound through. Then we connect all these different nodes using the connect method, uh, connecting the producer to the processor, the processor to the output, and finally, we can start it, we can make some delay, say, okay, we should play for two seconds, and then we can stop. And now I'm going to show basically what that gives. And I think I can do like that, and then go over here. And I basically made the same sample here. Um, I just put it in some, some different buttons so that we can play it and stop it when we want. And now we have a little tone. An additional thing I did was just to randomize the frequency so we can stop it and play again to get some different frequencies. <laughs> yeah. And that was the demo <laughs> of that. And next, uh, there are some related uh, libraries. Uh, I talked about the um, media stream audio source node which would make it possible to get sound from the microphone. Um, that's not part of the API itself. It's a part of the separate API called the Media Capture and Streams API. So I've also made a wrapper for that. Actually, I did that before, before uh, making the web audio wrapper, because I saw it was a dependency. <laughs> uh, and another, uh, more of like a sibling library, is the Media Stream Recording uh, library, which makes it possible to uh, record media streams. And then, now I'm going to show a little demo of that as well. Because uh, the title, or like the description of the, of the talk, was that I was also going to make some music. <laughs> uh, and I'm not a musician, but uh, at least I can try. <laughs> so originally, um, when I made this presentation, I was just going to show this little keyboard where we can uh, use some different um, ADSR envelopes for playing some uh, sound. Uh, so we can play some, some tune. But I figured, hmm, we should make this more interesting, more exciting, we should use the media streams. So uh, during the last week, I, uh, I put up uh, a new library, which is the media stream recording library I showed just before. So I made that during the last week, um, just to make this demo. Um, and that is uh, actually all these different uh, demos that I'm showing right now. You can find on GitHub, uh, so you can try them out yourself afterwards if you want. Um, but this is the new demo that I'm going to show today. So first, we can, uh, oh. And I'm going to show, pick uh, this one, or uh, this one. So that's my inbuilt microphone in the laptop. And basically now, it's just uh, displaying the amplitude of the sound that it be is being output. So that's also one of the different processing nodes that are uh, possible to use called the analyzer node, uh, which can be used to uh, basically analyze uh, the amplitude and frequency and different stuff of the sound while it is input uh, through the microphone. Um, and then now we're going to uh, record a little sound. A nice click. And here we have like the whole spectrum of the amplitude over time of that recording. And I can mark a little area. It could be this area. That was not the nice part of the sound, but this one, nice. <laughs> and we can uh, analyze it. So here I made um, a frequency graph of the sound. Uh, it's a part of the web audio API as well that you can analyze the frequency uh, of some sound bit over time. And then I made an average over the whole period of the sound clip. And we can see that we average at a max peak of 796. And I've also made some buttons that can adjust the playback rate, how fast we play back this uh, sound clip, because if you play some sound at a faster pace, it also means that the frequency will increase. So I can adjust this uh, sound clip to uh, be played, for example, at a 
440 hertz, nice. <laughs> or a higher frequency, or an even higher frequency. Um, and then that was basically meant to be it, but last night uh, I did some even more integration, even more demoing. So I actually uh, integrated it into my keyboard uh, so that if you have recorded some part in this demo, you can go over to the keyboard now, and actually it's going to use that sound bit as the tone that's going to play on the keyboard. So now we can um, pick some other preset for the ASDR, and then, ah, okay, we have to go up the gain. <laughs> and that was actually it. Uh, and what's next for me? First of all, I'm going to finish up covering all of the API for the body API. I'm at 71% of the specification right now. Uh, at least all the other wrappers are done, <laughs> so I'm not missing that. Uh, and next, I'm also going to be annotating it uh, with error handling because uh, there can be a lot of different uh, exceptions uh, that, ha that happen when you make JS interrupt from Blazor. Uh, and I made another wrapper that can handle it very nicely. So that's one of the next things I'm going to work on as well. Um, but that was it. <laughs>